Hello, Meg Miller, Adult Services Librarian at the Pflugerville Public Library. And during this time of library closure and program postponements and cancellations, we've been bringing you additional content to hopefully help you pass the time while you've been at home. Uh, so I've actually got some crafts that folks will be able to do, hopefully with stuff they can find right around the house. Uh, Crafty Cafe is a program that we do on the third Sunday of every month at 2 p.m. Um, anyone 12 and up is welcome to attend. We have a craft and there is a Keurig uh, for beverages to make it a cafe. So for these purposes, you'll have to provide your own beverage, but we're hoping to provide everyone with some crafty at home cafe. Uh, so we've got some crafts for you to try and hopefully have the things around the house. So for this recycled t-shirt craft, you'll need um, obviously some recycled t-shirts. I've got eight here, um, some cardboard to create your loom out of. Um, for the loom, you'll need a thinner yarn or string, cotton string, um, and then cutting materials, some scissors, or you could use an X-Acto knife. If you use something like this, you'd want to use some extra cardboard or maybe a self-healing cutting mat to cut with so you don't damage the table underneath. Um, also have a sharpie and a ruler for measuring out with my loom and then tapes. I used a little bit of scotch tape as well as a little bit of painter's tape towards the end of this craft. So for creating your t-shirt yarn, um, you'll go ahead and take one of the t-shirts, the rest off to the side. I'm going to use my scissors. Also, if you're already a crafter or so, um, you may have some scissors that are just for fabric. Um, so this was actually an old Halloween costume. Um, Baltimore's Marching Ravens flag line went as M&M's one year and we made these. Um, I have not worn it in years. It's not the most expensive of t-shirts, so this is going to be a great way to reuse this particular material. Um, so I've just folded it in half, kind of uh, smoothed out any wrinkles and I'm going to cut just here below the sleeve and directly across to create um, for my yarn. Now if you're cutting shirts that are smaller or children sizes maybe um, your yarn probably will be just the complete width around of the shirt. Um, for this adult size shirt I'll actually be able to get two um, strips of yarn out of each length. So now that I've removed the top and sleeves of my shirt, I can set those aside and I've got here just the strips. And um, this will have a fun little detail, a little bit of that coloring left on. Um, now I actually don't want the um, hem of the shirt there, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off now. Because we really like the fact that um, when you stretch out your t-shirt yarn, the edges will curl in um, and with the hem on the bottom, you don't get quite that curl. Um, so this will just be recyclable. You won't need that. So for this, for our perfectionists, you can definitely measure out about three quarters or an inch strips. Um, for the rest of us, because of the way we'll be doing this weaving, you won't really see the edges. So if they're not perfect, it's quite all right. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut strips across the t-shirt until we get what will ultimately be two strips. So we have the one thin strip, I've got my two ends here, and I'm going to go ahead and snip there on one, and then the other. As I said, if you, this is where you would only be snipping one end of the circle. Um, if you had a smaller size t-shirt, but here I've gotten two pieces of t-shirt yarn. I'm going to stretch them a little bit. That'll help those edges curl and we'll be ready to use them in our weaving. So once you've taken all of your different t-shirts and cut them down into strips and tugged a little bit to make them yarn, um, I've got eight here. Now you're ready to make your weaving loom. Um, so you'll need your cardboard. This will be um, up to you, personal preference, how large of a loom you use. This is just a smaller Amazon box that I had around. Um, and I don't think I want anything as big as a placemat. A placemat I would probably use a piece of cardboard bigger like this. Um, for this one, I think I'm going to go a little bit more just like a, uh, almost a coaster, but a little bit bigger. 
And so we're gonna use this smaller side of the cardboard. Um, and so we're gonna to wanna to mark off uh, across the end of your cardboard here in um, three quarter. Let me make sure I've got it right on the inches side there. Three quarters of an inch across. Three quarters of an inch, another, 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 and continue until you make it all the way across the width, um, making sure too that you have an even number of um, slots. not the easiest thing to do and top at the same time almost there three quarters three quarters and there's our three quarters and um, so we've got each of those across I'll mark that on either side and then the other measurement I want to make on our cardboard here is two inches up from the bottom here and let's make sure I'm right at two inches here as well. And I'm going to mark that all the way across. Because when I cut these slices, I'm going to want them to be up the full two inches on the cardboard. Now that we've got each of our pieces marked out, um, we'll cut through each one to the two inch mark across both sides and then we will get our um, thinner yarn into play. Great thing with these cardboard looms is if I don't quite get it down to the two inch mark I can really bend it and get that extra distance. All right, so now we've got the end of our yarn here. I'm going to need just a small piece of scotch tape for the end of it. There we go, right there. So I'm going to put that on the back of my loom here. And bringing my yarn up and down. Down to the next one, continuously looping through to the next slice in my cardboard to create my warp. Right. And actually, I may have done this. This is where the cardboard bends, and so I'm getting a little bit of movement. Um, I may have actually decided to do this as on the opposite direction. Um, but you'll have to consider because the way you're wrapping as you weave your knots of t-shirt yarn will be on the long ends so my knots of t-shirt will be here um, and so this will be a little bit longer with the knots on the side if i wanted something a little bit more placemat i might do it this way with the longer here and then my knots of t-shirt would be along the left and right side rather than like the top and bottom here as we're doing for this one so we'll just continue to wrap all the way around and then tape that last corner of yarn to the back as well. Again, make sure that you have um, an even number as you're loading your loom. So now that we've created our loom, um, gone all the way across and taped at each of the ends, and we're ready to start weaving with our t-shirt yarn. Right, so I'm just going to pick our my first color, stretch it out a little bit. Um, and so this first one, I am going to go um, under the first four, over the next, and under the third. And continue over and under as I continue across the loom. So over, under over the next one, under the one after, over, under, and so I'll be over this final string here. And then I'm just gonna pull all the way down to my end there. 
Um, and then we'll go for the very next color. Go with some purple, stretch it out a little bit um, so that you can see you start to get that curl. And so now for the second one, I'm going to go um, instead of under the first one, I'm going to go over the first one and under the second one. So over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And as I'm sure many of you have already guessed, when I get to my third, after pulling down here, when I get to my third color, I'm going to go back to the way this first one was. So I'm going to go under the first string, uh, under, over, under, over. And then I'm going to continue that all the way up the top of my loom until I'm ready to tie this off. Continuing to pull down as I go. The tighter, the better for you there. So put that in a little closer. Under on this end, over on this end. My second color is over the first and under the last. My third color is under the first and over the last. Once you've got your t-shirt yarn woven in the way you want, you want to make sure you've got an even number of rows. You'll be ready to knot the yarn ends. Um, and this is where our little bit of painter's tape will come into play. You want to mark off here at the end where you want your knots to be. That way you get a smoother, even end. And then you want to see which two pieces of yarn go together. So down here at this end, I've got two pieces of black. Gotta find that other piece of black t-shirt yarn. There it is. And I'm just gonna put a knot in here, right at that tape line. You can also use uh, masking tape, even washi tape, of which I am very fond. Um, and then my next two colors here are the black and the white. And I'm gonna knot those together. And you're gonna continue doing this to both sides of your weaving. Next is the brown and the orange. Making sure that you match up the colors as they go. Next I have a purple and then a white. Here's the purple, not you green. There we are. And pulling. With the knots tied on each side, I'm gonna go ahead and flip over and I'm just going to trim each of these pieces and cut them so that now we can tie this. Yeah, this guy's just right here. I'm gonna take them off from this side. And both. And oh. each of these to remove our mat from the cardboard loom. All right, removing the last few strings from our loom. place my loom aside and now I'm ready to tie knots in the two strings. It will help if I have them all kind of out and down. So I'm going to knot these two together fairly tightly. And then knot the next two together. Definitely want to pull these all out as you get ready to knot so that it'll be easier for you to match them up, making sure that your other knots are out to the side. So the next two, and this again is why you need to make sure that you have an even number as you go across. And so you'll knot this side all the way across, not the far side, all the way across. 
and then just trim these down real um, very close to the knot. So right down here next to the knot and then they'll get you a nice little finished edge. And so once you tie these knots on one side, you'll be able to tie the second side a little bit tighter, tugging to really get your weave in there tight. Just oh, that went through. Didn't. There's my knot. And the final one here at the end. Tighten that knot. And then we'll just trim these last four down. So I'm trimming the excess yarn off of these and it will be up to personal preference how you groom your little mat from here so this has got kind of a lot of fringe on the side and so i would say that i want to get this trimmed down at a more even length so i'm just going to brush my fingers through it and i'm going to come through here let's go finger measurements i'm going to go with three fingers from my knots and if I had better fabric scissors this would be a lot easier to cut through but since we're all just at home and working with what I've got and these IKEA scissors aren't doing so bad Get rid of that. and then now I have although my straight line cutting is not the best, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit more of a trim on some of these. This is why I'm a librarian and not a hairdresser. All right. And my awesome little desk trivet um, is done.